The Man Up Show is sponsored by Delgado Productions on AM870, The Answer. Welcome. You've tuned in to Man Up, heard each and every Saturday evening at 8, where host Antonio Delgado, Carl Kozlowski, and Ron Pearson, along with their guests, take a stand for modern manhood. Stand up and man up, America. And now, your host, Antonio, Carl, and Ron. Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome to another edition of Man Up, coming to you from the luxurious studios of KRLA 870 AM in Los Angeles. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Carl Narco Kozlowski, and with me are... Yo, yo, Antonio the Degenerate Delgado. And, and Ron the Mirthful Married Man Pearson. <laughs> wow, so, uh, yeah. Hey, babe, by the way, Narco, are you like a drug... Buster? No, what? actually, narcoleptic. It oh, just sounds right. a lot cooler to say narco. <laughs> Makes me women wonder, the man of mystery. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, he's uh, so so attractive how he just falls asleep in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Hey, look, every man does it with their women, but at least uh, I'm open about it. Yeah, you've but, heard of the book Every Man's Battle, but Carl's isn't that one. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to start this week with a new thing called the check-in. How's everybody's week been? Well, I want to start with you, Carl, because weeks ago you told us, hey, I'm going to lose weight. I want to lose weight. And just to be honest, as your friend, yeah, I would really like to see that because I've kind of known you for a long time and I worry about your health and uh-huh. I worry about you. And so, all right, all right, girl, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> so I joined Weight Watchers April 26th. Come on, and, hold on. And it, so we're now, yeah. how many weeks is that? I've, about five weeks, and five I've weeks. lost 18 pounds. Oh, man, Come that's on. crazy. Last week I lost 6.8. Come on. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, I'm on that's a tear. Ridiculous. You lost yeah. 18 pounds in Total, five, in five weeks. weeks. Yep. Diesel. Yeah, it started 6.2, and then three duds. I went 0.9 up, I mean down, and then 0.5 up, 0.4 <laughs> down, and I was about to quit. And they're like, just, well. What are you doing wrong? And they redirected the. I was doing a lot of things. Yeah, don't stupid. eat so much. Is what be, they said. Did, did you find like a like a turkey under one of those folds? And you're like, oh, a turkey. I left her there last week. Carl, turkeys I'm so make proud you of sleepy, you. so it's good. So then I lost six point eight. So there, well, tryptophan just knocked him right out, that's and right. he didn't eat for weeks because yeah. he was asleep. Yes, that's that's so. The key. You've lost how many pounds now? Gabe? Eighteen. Eighteen. I'm so proud of yeah. you, man. Yeah, Only congratulations. Two hundred and forty left to go. I know. <laughs> Exactly. Get the breast reduction and you can lose another few pounds. Go down to a C cup, Carl. Uh, and everyone, just I a just handful. always just a handful ur- I always urge people at moments like this to, uh, you know, check out our photo on the uh, homepage and wonder which one of us is the one we're talking about, Delgado and, or and, me. And why we use the fisheye lens. Okay, so. And Delgado, what's up with- how are you doing, man? What's up? I'm all right, fellas. I'm doing good. I, I was just in Mexico, man. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to move down there. Really? I, I really want to move to Mexico. Where were you at? Uh, <laughs> I was in Rosarito. I nice. Just but you know what, man? Wait, were you in that house on the beach? I was at house on the beach. Oh, I was. Oh, my God. That's what I'm telling you, man. I'm going to ex- I'm, I'm going to be- become a lawyer. That's how lawyers live. <laughs> well, in, in Los Angeles, man, I live in a freaking box on the on like a cardboard box, man. My and it's life- like $8 million, too, right? <laughs> Come on. Look who's talking. Oh. <laughs> look who's talking. <laughs> Mr. Successful over here. <laughs> Yeah, Tell, so well, so you were there with uh, how much did the women cost that you uh, were there? Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! No, I took I took a friend from from here. A friend, from, a friend in from quotes. here from here air quotes. No, but you know what was friendly. funny, man? What was his name? <laughs> Carl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but you know what's funny, dude? Yeah, I went down there trying to get away, and all my neighbors were white, dude. I guess they're all moving down there. <laughs> and I went to a restaurant. So, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, so, Carl. Hold so on. The, you're the Hispanic in Los Angeles who goes to Mexico thinking, I can be among my people, and they're, like, and they're all white. Yeah. And they're all going, what, what's the gardener doing in our, uh, in our <laughs> Exactly. Car? Look, and I go to the restaurant, and I kid you not, everyone at the restaurant is blonde. All the girls are blonde at this restaurant, and the only Latino eating there was me, and and all the people in the kitchen. <laughs> so I'm like, again, I'm like, am I in Malibu again? It's wow. like I didn't even leave. <laughs> and how about you, Ron? Because oh, we got to get to the news in a sec here. What about well, you? I've been doing pretty well. As a matter of fact, last night I was on the new show on the WB Woo-hoo. called The Big Stage. It's I called did... the CW, not the no, WB. Yeah, yeah, sorry. The if you want to stay there, you want to get your network right. This is in 1999. Well, let me tell you, that's the Red Bull kicking in. So, Yeah, yeah so on the CW, it's called The Big Stage. Stage and I, I did my act, and uh, it was the opening episode for the whole season. Nice, I got nice. another one I'll be on later.
later. So it's on Friday nights at, I think, uh, 8 to 9 or 9 to 10. I can't remember. Did the uh, thong chief? I mean, were you working oh the pole? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I can't think of what else. I was do doing my act. Yeah, so. your act. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, anyway, no, folks, he's a world-famous uh, comic juggler. Look him up. He's fantastic. Well, Rangers I think and... that's an oxymoron. World-famous and juggler don't fit in the same <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Look, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to build you up after beating you down. Thank so. you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So, folks, uh, we need to uh, move on with our... Uh, uh, week's uh, news and this is curated as always by our fabulous news director angel mancini ladies and gentlemen here's our lead story and now the lead story okay so this week uh the issue of toxic masculinity Ooh. reared its ugly head because uh this is a pretty amazing twist of fate Toxic masculinity is like this ridiculous term that basically dogs on guys for repressing their emotions and acting out violently, supposedly. And so uh, anyways, uh, that's why this show got started was a response to all this stuff about claiming all guys are just evil and there's nothing good about us. We're trying to show a good example. And you know who took our side this week? Meryl Streep. Wow. Yes. I don't believe that, but oh my God. <laughs> yeah. She, she was promoting a new season of, uh, she's on a new uh, season of an HBO show. Uh, and uh, basically they somehow toxic masculinity came up. They threw that at her as a question. And she goes, no, it isn't. I don't believe that it's just men. Everyone can be toxic. Right. There's good and bad in all people. And we need to all come together and encourage the good on all sides. So you're saying that this show was created in a response to that concept in a lot by of ways. our fabulous Antonio. Antonio Delgado, who calls himself, in, in our intros, a degenerate. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe, just maybe, Antonio, maybe there's some truth. Yeah. But not toxic. <laughs> yeah. He's just only masculine. slightly poisonous. Just, okay. just degenerate. Yeah. No, yeah, but, but, but you, know, you know this movement, this <laughs> SJ anti- male movement yeah, that's yeah. happening you you know how you know when it's in trouble it's in trouble when hollywood royalty starts turning again yeah so that's I when you know so. it's in trouble she's hollywood royalty man. she is I, and i disagree that it's in trouble i think it's in full swing even my son who's young uh about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. we watched this little video and it talked about how boys are even being shut down in the classroom and my son goes dad that's how i feel yeah, wow. that's how wow. I feel. And I'm like, wow. So he's, you know, I'm enough of an adult to go, OK, whatever. I don't care how certain people might feel or not feel because I'm going to be judged by my God. And so I'm just going to yeah. live under that. And I don't care if there's going to people be people that don't like me or like me. But my son's maybe not old enough to process that. And so I think he feels totally shut down. It and, sucks. And and that's the whole purpose of this show, my friend. So maybe someone like your son will find something like this and they can listen to it and say, hey, I'm not alone. There's other guys out there who are just talking, being authentic, saying what they really feel. And all we have to do is just go first, man, and other people will follow our lead. Let's, let's do that for our sons. Mine too, man. Well, in this article that Carl was bringing up, it said, uh, you know, toxic masculinity is a form of manhood that's defined by violence, sex, status, and aggression. So apparently it's just our side. And Magic Mike was never a hit. <laughs> they never did Magic Mike too. Or Fifty nope. Shades of Grey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right? That was all women driven. Yes, right? It was. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They have this other thing they talk in the in the article they talk about microaggressions. I that whole thing doesn't even make sense to me. What oh, yeah. is a microaggression? Okay, it's basically a snowflake thing, like these college kids that are uh you know, raised coddled from cradle to, to college by their parents, have every little thing handed to them, participation trophies. You get an award like everyone else, even if you're a total loser. Does that just – but, 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 but basically they get offended by everything. And so right. colleges so try to say – thing. It's I a mean, thing. Yeah, so colleges realize – even the most PC colleges realize they can't label everything with the equivalence of, say, rape or assault, which, of course, are terrible things when they're really occurring. But the thing is uh, that they're talking about that even minor offenses like, oh, like you, thought you get offended a, by somebody's description of a, of a class of people Ron, or things like that. And they say, oh, it's a microaggression Ron, because let, they get upset. Let me give you an example. Well, everything that's gone on example. in this room has been yeah. over microaggression. I was about we, to say. We just make fun of each other. That's yeah. all we do. <laughs> Ron, sometimes, you're, sometimes your jokes don't make me laugh. Wow. <laughs> Wow. That was a little bit more than wow. Macro. <laughs> that that actually cut pretty deep. That was a macro. <laughs> and I I would be offended by that, but I'm not. You know why? Because I know you're not educated enough to understand oh. them. <laughs> 
Wow. Yeah, he says to the lawyer, he, the yeah, guy who gave doesn't you have your law degree, degree DeVry? Oh. <laughs> ITT? Oh my the God. Ho Chi Minh School of Law. Come on now. Yeah, Ho Chi Minh. Oh my God. So, I mean, 50 but, bucks on the internet. But, but where does this, where does this uh, go? Do you think that, are we going to, uh, are me, regular normal guys that aren't beta males but aren't complete Harvey Weinsteins? Are we going to be able to like stand up for ourselves as a, as a society or not? Yeah, I mean, they, they always are, man. Guys are always look. Guys are always going to be able to stand up for themselves. Always look. Um, if you look at that study, I think you're the one who showed me this. Um, that the majority of the women actually appreciate masculinity more than the guys. Huh. So right now, women are the ones who say we need masculine men. And actually, I've I've seen that reflected in my social media with the younger girls too, man. They want masculinity. <laughs> my, my problem, they're, they're, they go to you for hey, masculinity. Hey, hey, there are guys that operate in the world. There are guys that operate in the world of toxic masculinity, no doubt. But it's certain. They, why do you put everybody in one box? Don't put me in a box. I'm not dead. I'm not a mime. <laughs> By the way, two negatives do make a positive. That would be a dead mime. <laughs> <laughs> and who, and the world needs more of that. Yes. So, uh, well, we should move on to another, unless you guys have anything else to say about well, this issue. I, oh, actually, no, we do. I wanted to comment on... Uh, well, I, 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 yeah. I have something. So let's, instead of talking about what the worst of men are, who are the best of men? Yes. What is the, who's your ideal man that you have? Well, ironically, you know, you're talking right here. Hey, who is are the it me? Who are the best men? <laughs> And yet the, the the company that has the slogan "The best a man can get," Gillette, is tearing down guys themselves in in an absolutely insane suicidal ad campaign that like a few months back, and they keep adding to these things with other ads. They just you described it well, Antonio. What? How would you say that? That's yeah. kind of what got you upset, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and That's actually, another, it, it was uh, to start the show. This. It was. I mean, basically, the the ad is saying that all men are bully, all men are destroyers, all men abuse, all men are sexual predators, and and that's only like half the guys in this room right now. It's not all of them, <laughs> at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so okay, so so my, so my question, I'm going to throw it out again. Yeah, who is a real man that you would look up to that what who do you put out there on that oh there are so many man i yeah. i mean off the top of my head my father who passed away basically providing for his family man there's every day here that's awesome tell there. me about your dad i don't know about him um d- Dude, the simplest guy, dude. He got up. He went to work. He Did provided... he grow up here in Los Angeles? Yeah. Yeah. He go... I mean, he went to work. He provided for his family. He literally got a cancer from, you know, from the asbestos from where he worked. Oh, wow. So he literally died providing for his family, man. I mean, I can't think of any greater hero than right. that. He gave, he gave his life for his family, basically. He did. And yeah. how many heroes are like that in, in everyday society, man? Maybe we don't have like that right now, so when in politics. But, dude, there are so many men out there just providing and just being the best they can can man and he was there he was there for you so here's my here's my person here's my person atticus finch to kill a mockingbird he to me fictional character doesn't matter all right doesn't matter in that case i would have said jean luc picard (laughs) (laughs) fantastic (laughs) no i'm going with atticus finch he was to me he represents what a real man is he was strong he was smart he looked out for his family, but he was a gentleman. I, 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 my wife's from Texas, so I go, there's two types of Texas guys. There's the Texas gentleman, which I think is the ultimate man to be like, mm-hmm. which to me is like an Atticus Finch. And then there's the Texas beep kicker. <laughs> and, the, and the beep kicker is the guy that you don't really want to be like. He's more uh, maybe on the toxic masculine side a little but, bit. But you know what, man? I don't think I, you can catch a, a, a man – and you can catch him at his greatest moment, and he could be the greatest here, and that same human being will do can also be imperfect at another moment, man. So All of us can be. Yeah. We're fallible. Yeah. So, We're fallible. I, I so much. I've messed up so much. So I wouldn't even label any individual as a toxic masculine man. Just maybe that moment or that trait or that incident. I like that. I like that. I, I hear it. I hear it. Okay. So um, we need to hit one other thing, uh, a couple of things really quick. Uh, that are sort of related. Um, there's also a, a British study, or actually, we want to say lead story two, electric boogaloo. <laughs> lead story two, electric boogaloo. All right. So uh, coming out of Britain, there is a uh, pretty disturbing survey about you know what are the attitudes towards masculinity and femininity out in England, 
And uh, it turns out that uh, women, femininity is perceived by the current millennial generation there by like double digits as more positive than uh, the masculinity. 